Where are we going in the future with battery storage? Yeah, I think the future is, it's, there's just there's three legs to the stool. Uh, there's uh, electric cars, there's a stationary battery pack, um, and solar power. Uh, with those three things, you can have a completely sustainable energy future. Uh, that's, all, that's all that's needed. On the, solar, on the solar front, like I said, uh, it's going to be a combination of rooftop solar and utility scale solar. Um, you'll need both because of the you know, enormous demand for electricity. Um, and then, uh, you know, one of the things that's, that's been missing, I think, up till now is having rooftop solar that looks good um, and isn't, an, uh, you know, um, that's, that's where we've got the, the solar glass roof that we're developing. Um, and we're doing it in different styles so that it, it, you know, it matches the aesthetics of a, of a particular house or um, so regional style. Um, that's, I think that's actually pretty important. Um, and um, the conventional flat panel solars will, will, for, for flat roofs and for commercial will be uh, the, way, the way to go. Um, but yeah, it's, and, and, and putting solar panels on the, on the car itself not that, uh, not that helpful because the actual surface area of the car is not, not very much and cars are very often indoors. Um, and so it's the least efficient place to put solar is on the car. Just wondering about maybe a wrap of some sort, does that, does that make any sense in the future? Like a, a wrap of solar around either a building made of a solar panel or a wrap of a, of a vehicle actually being the solar panel but being the, the components of the vehicle itself. I don't think so. Um, I'll scrap that idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, just, uh, it's just way better to put it on a roof, uh, for sure. Um, and I've, I've really thought about this. I mean, really, and I pushed my team about, like, isn't there some way we could do it on the car? Um, I mean, the, the, technically, if you have, like, some sort of transformer-like thing which will pop out of the trunk like, like a, a, you know, like a hard top convertible and just, like, like, ratchet solar panels over the whole surface area of the car, extending like this for the entire, say, uh, square footage of a parking space, um, provided you're in the sun, uh, that would be enough to generate about 20 to 30 miles a day of electricity. But uh, th that is for sure the expensive, difficult way to do it. <laughs> Governor Berga. Still thought about it. Maybe we should. But. Elon, thank, thanks for being here. Uh, with your background in payment systems, uh, you understand uh, the important role of uh, security and transactions. Uh, yeah. Now that you've got, I, I think security is a huge concern. Like cybersecurity. Yes, and you're in in, a, in, a, in the vehicles you're building now are incredibly complex software systems. I mean, the car is really yep. a rolling piece of software. It is. It's like a laptop on wheels. Yes. So, uh, share with us a little bit about uh, your thoughts on cybersecurity and how you how how, how we protect. Uh, you talk about protecting society when uh, yep. you've got a rolling fleet of... Um, I, I think one of the biggest uh, risks for autonomous vehicles is somebody achieving um, a fleet-wide hack. Um, you know, in principle, if, if somebody was able to hack, say, all of the autonomous Teslas, they could say, I mean, just as a prank, they could say, like, send them all to Rhode Island. <laughs> From across the United States. <laughs> and they'd be like, well, okay. That would be the end of Tesla. <laughs> um, and <laughs> there'll be a lot of angry people in Rhode Island, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so uh, we've got to make super sure that, uh, that a, a fleet-wide hack is basically impossible and that if people are in the car that they have uh, override authority on uh, whatever the car is doing. So if the car is doing something wacky, uh, you can press a button that no amount of software can override that will ensure that the uh, you, you, you gain control of the vehicle um, and kind of cut, cut the link to the servers. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty fundamental. Um, within the car, we actually have, even, even if somebody gains access to the car, there are multiple subsystems within the car that, that, that also have uh, specialized encryption. So the powertrain, for example, has specialized encryption. So even if somebody would gain access to the car, they cannot gain access to the powertrain or to the braking system. Um, and, um, but it is my top, top concern from a security standpoint at, at Tesla is making sure that fleet-wide hack or any vehicle-specific hack can occur. The, the same, the, they have the same problem with cell phones. Um, you know, uh, we're, it's, it's kind of crazy today that we live quite 
uh, comfortably in, in, a, in a world that George Orwell would have thought was super crazy. Um, like we, we, we all carry um, a phone with a, with, with a microphone that can be turned on really at any time without our knowledge with a GPS that knows our position um, and a camera um, and uh, well kind of all of our personal information. Um, we do this um, willingly um, and uh, it's kind of wild to think that that's the case. Um, so so pho the, the phone, like Apple and, and uh, Google kind of have the same challenge of making sure there cannot be a fleet-wide hack or a system-wide hack of phones um, or, or a specific hack. So that, that's our top, our top concern. Um, yeah, it's going to become a bigger and bigger concern. It, like Tesla's, um, I, don't, I don't want to have fate here, but Tesla's, Tesla's pretty good at software compared to the other car companies. Um, and um, so I do I think it's going to be a bit like an even bigger challenge for, for the other car companies to ensure security. Yeah. Thank you. Governor Dugard. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Mr. Musk, thank you for speaking to all the governors today. It's, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, one question I had, uh, we saw when gasoline prices went to three and a half dollars a gallon, there was a big jump in interest in hybrid vehicles sure. and, and uh, you saw those vehicles become very much in demand and then as gasoline prices have fallen, you've seen a reversal of that and I'm wondering to what extent uh, you have a concern about the future of electric vehicles in the face of those very low prices. Can you speak to that? Well, the, the, the economics, um, uh, they, they, they kind of set, set the slope of the, the, the curve. Um, so there's no question in my mind whatsoever that all transport, with the ironic exception of rockets, will go fully electric. Um, Everything, um, planes, trains, automobiles. Well, tra a lot of trains are already electric. Um, all, all ships, um, and um, so, but it's a question of what that time frame is, and the economic uh, incentive structure drives that time frame. Um, that's really what it amounts to. Um, you know, there's. there's the, 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 and the big challenge is that there's an unpriced externality in the cost of fossil fuels. Uh, so the un unpriced externality is the, uh, the, the probably weighted uh, harm of changing the chemical constituency of the uh, atmosphere and oceans. Um, it, it's, it's, since it is not captured in the price of gasoline, um, it does not uh, drive the right behavior. Um, you know, it would be like uh, if tossing out garbage was just free and, you know, there was no penalty. You just do as much as you want. Then, like, streets would be full of garbage. Um, so, um, and we, we regulated a lot of other things like sulfur emissions and nitrous oxide emissions and that kind of thing. It's done, done a lot of good on that front. Um, with CO2, it's tough because there's so many vested interests on the sort of fossil fuel side. Um, and sometimes I think, I feel like those guys feel like kind of hard done by because, uh, um, you know, it wasn't obvious like when they were creating their oil and gas companies that it would be bad for the environment. Um, and they worked really hard to create those companies. And then they feel like, well, now they're being kind of attacked on moral grounds. Um, when they didn't originally start those oil companies or, or, or build them up on, on bad moral grounds. Um, and, and, and it is true that we cannot instantaneously change to a sustainable situation. Um, but then those guys will also fight pretty hard to slow down the change. And that's really what I think is morally wrong. Governor Bevin and then De Governor Hutchinson. Then we'll take a couple, oh, and then Governor Hickenlooper, and then we'll take some audience questions. Governor Bevin. Elon, Elon, thank you for being here. Uh, short version of the question, then slightly longer. The short version is, do you ever feel pressure by others' expectations of you and your endeavors in light of 
the progress you've made thus far is the short version. And, and, and more specifically, when you look just at Tesla alone, and you look at a company with a $54 billion valuation, uh, right. and seemingly by typical mar market metrics, no justifiable reason for that. What are you saying? Does, I'm just saying, I'm <laughs> Sir. curious. Sir. I'm just, in all seriousness, do you feel a, a, a concern ever that your intellect and your intellectual curiosity and your ingenuity cannot be matched by those that are trying to commercialize it? Does that ever affect how you think or decisions that you make? Uh, well, it, it is actually, I find it quite uh, tough um, when there are very high expectations. Um, I try to actually tamp down those expectations as you know, to be possible. In fact, I've gone on record several times as saying that the stock price is higher than we have any right to deserve. Um, uh, and that's for sure true based on you know, where we are today and have been in the past. So the stock price obviously ref reflects a lot of optimism about where Tesla will be in the future. Um, and now the, the thing that makes that um, you know, quite a difficult emotional hardship for me uh, is, is that you know, those expectations sometimes get out of, out of control. And I'm like, I hate disappointing people. Um, and so I'm like trying real hard to meet those expectations, but that's pretty tall order. Um, and uh, a lot of times it's real not, really not fun. I have to say, a whole lot less fun than it may seem. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't ever sell any stock unless I have to for, for taxes. Um, so, you know, I've said publicly, I'm not going to, like, take money off the table. You know, I'll be last. I'm going down with, I'm going down with the ship. So, uh, I'll be the last to do it. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, oh, I really wouldn't recommend anyone start a card company. <laughs> I really wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> it's not a recipe for happiness and freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Governor Bevan. Governor Hutchinson. <laughs> Mr. Musk, uh, Asa Hutchinson from Arkansas. Thank you for your uh, frank observations about uh, exploration. Uh, you know, I look at uh, the spirit of in uh, invention and the spirit of exploration, which is really the hallmark of America. What is your comment on NASA, its mission? I was in Congress, I supported NASA, but I always feel like it's floundering, does not have the support of the American people that's needed. Uh, what, uh, what's your comment on NASA, its mission, and what advice would you give us? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I should say I'm a big fan of NASA. Um, in fact, at one point, my password was, I love NASA. Uh, <laughs> literally, that was my password. Um, um, and, um, you know, I think the, um, NASA, NASA does a lot of good things for which, for which it doesn't get enough credit, um, and that the public, I guess, doesn't know that much about. Um, I like a lot, you know, most members of the public they're not really into hard science, but, you know, it's like not, it's not the, the thing they're tuning in for most of the time. Um, I love hard science, you know, uh, but uh, um, it's not that popular. So, uh, but there's great things in terms of the, the telescopes like the Hubble and the James Webb and the, you know, the rovers on Mars um, and uh, the pro, you know, probes to the outer solar system. Um, those are all like really great things, um, but to get the public excited, you got to get people in the picture. Um, it just it's just a hundred times different if there are people in the picture, um, and uh, you know if, if there's some criticism of NASA, it's like I, it's like important to remember people in the picture. You know if you want to get the public support, um, 